Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Inside the Force. I am your host, David Cottingham, and I'm also your guest because I am completely flying solo on this episode of Inside the Force. Um, it has been a few weeks since we put out an episode, and uh, I do want to get into that first as far as you know what's been going on with us and the show and um by any by no means at all are we uh stopping to talk about star wars but there's just a lot of stuff going on personally with uh with uh, the people that usually join me on these shows uh it's all kind of happening at once so um so i have been kind of putting this off a little bit to kind of let things die down and then uh but you know i felt like i'd give this a shot cuz I looked back and I don't think I've ever done one of these by myself. Uh, I've always had obviously Casey with me ever since the beginning. Uh, and then I've had several people help fill in the gaps there, you know, with Cody and Hannah and uh, Corey. And of course, uh, even Martin over at the Mandalore podcast has joined me a few times. Uh, so, you know, none of them have been available and I just still wanted to get a show out and there's a lot, I got a whole list of things that I want to talk about. So, uh, I'll just talk to about them with you and we'll see what happens and we'll see how this goes. Um, Casey is doing well though. Everybody's doing well. Uh, Casey is still, you know, managing his family and he has, we have talked about him coming back on the show, you know, every once in a while here. So expect to see, uh, and hear Casey back here shortly. Uh, Cody is about to have, uh, him and his wife are about to have their second child. So any, any day now, basically. So he's going to be on hiatus for a little while dealing and helping with that. Um, Hannah has some personal things going on, but she'll be back very shortly. And uh, Martin, who was actually going to join me this week, uh, fell ill, um, unfortunately. And we hope he, gets recovered and, and gets back to, to joining me on some of these in a way. Uh, so that's, that's kind of that deal. And, uh, I'm, uh, I've been, I've been actually pretty busy too, but, um, cannot wait to talk star Wars right now. Cause it's been a long time and, uh, a lot's been going on. A lot's been happening in the world of star Wars. In fact, I think the right before we, the last episode we put out, was on the, uh, the the dawn of the release of Star Wars Visions. And I don't want to talk about that completely by myself, so I will probably wait till next week when I get somebody on here. Um, because I do have some feelings about it. Uh, overall, I actually enjoyed the Star Wars Visions episodes a lot more than I thought I would. Um some were better than others, but overall I thought they were really well done. Um, again, better than I expected, you know, not my complete favorite animation style, but that didn't turn me off. I think the stories were engaging. And, uh, when I get somebody on here and we dive deep dive into them, I think I want to, you know, do some rankings and kind of go through each one of them. And, and we may do the same thing with, uh, on the Mandalore podcast. So stay tuned for that when we try to, when we get together for that. Um, so we'll talk about Star Wars visions a little more deeply later on, uh, on another episode, but first and foremost, there's a lot of ton of news out there, um, over this last few weeks that, you know, I just, we haven't been able to cover here. Um, the first being that, you know, right now we're in the middle or, or towards the end of wave two of the high Republic, right? All of the novels and comics and stuff that's coming out with that star Wars released, um, the covers and the titles of books that are hitting early 2022, uh, a part of what they're calling obviously wave three, right? So the first adult novel that's hitting our shelves is called The Fallen Star, which is going to be written by Claudia Gray, the great Claudia Gray. I love, love her books, um, Master and Apprentice, uh, Leia, Lost Stars, 
amongst the, the the good ones out there in the in the canon. So, and of course, he just wrote uh, um, into the dark young adult novel from the High Republic. So she's got the adult novel in this wave, The Fallen Star. Uh, Daniel Ho- Jose Older has ha- he has the young adult one this time, which is called Midnight Horizon. And then you still got Justine Ireland doing a book called Mission to Disaster. And you've got comics still that Kevin Scott's working on. Uh, one of the one of the series that I'm interested in is a two shot comic series called Martian Row, where it dives into looks like more of his origins uh, prior to what we see in him and some of these novels. But um, yeah, exciting for for that. I think a lot of people have slowly got into the high Republic over the course of this year. Um, I finished light of the Jedi. So Hannah and I will be doing that shortly here on beyond the saga. I'm in, I'm in the middle of into the dark right now. So, um, and I'm reading the comic series. We actually have, I actually got the, uh, the first volume of the high Republic comic series right here. We're going to be talking about that again on, beyond the saga so um yeah lots of high republic stuff and it's it's great it's good stuff uh i'm actually getting more i'm getting real more familiar more and more familiar with the characters so uh it's been easier to get a hold of stories and follow these characters once you get to know them and and, and understand what's happening in this time and all that stuff so um I think like everybody, it, it takes some time to get into it, especially when you're still wrapping your head around all the other content that's out there in the, in the, you know, what we call present time, I guess, with, you know, within the Skywalker saga. So, um, so anyway, wave three kicks off January with, uh, the fallen star. And then of course, you know, releases throughout the year, um, in conjunction with kind of the comics, uh, there's an article I read that Star Wars is about to end the IDW license. The IDW license is uh, kind of is basically the comics that are for all ages that Star Wars has been putting out. They call it Star Wars Adventures, and even High Republic has a line on there. The High Republic Star Wars Advent, the High Republic Adventures. Um, but apparently that is ending at the end of the end of the year, um, meaning that IDW would no longer be publishing Star Wars comics. There is a plan, but uh, it's unknown right now what they're going to be doing with those series of comics. When that can be completely ending, it doesn't seem like they're going to go over to Marvel. It does seem like there's a rumor that they might release it to another publishing house like Scholastic or something like that. So um, interesting. I don't actually read those comics, the IDW comics. Um, so I'm not too familiar with the storylines in those right now. I, I, I see them, but um i'm st- I'm, I'm just diving more into the marvel line of comics so anyway if you're if you're reading those those are those are coming to an end um interesting announcement that came out the other day too was disney plus day so disney plus day is november 12th and that's going to mark the two-year anniversary of disney plus which is pretty crazy that means the Mandalorian debuted two years ago, come November twelfth, when Disney Plus launched. And uh, the curious thing is, they are releasing a bunch of stuff that day. They have a big slate of of content. It's hitting the streaming service on the twelfth, as well as some Star Wars stuff that I think we're all going to be excited for. So. Uh, things like uh, the Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, the film is being available for streaming on Disney Plus November 12th, Jungle Cruise as well. There's an original movie, Home Sweet Home Alone. Um, there's a Frozen thing with Olaf, you know, things like that, blah, 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 blah. And then you even got five more episodes coming from The World, according to Jeff Goldblum from National Geographic. But of course, this one, of course, hits on Star Wars fans, right? It says that there's a special celebrating the origins and legacy of Star Wars legendary bounty hunter Boba Fett. So basically, we're sounds like we're getting a documentary or um, some type of just video that's going to do a deep dive into Boba Fett. Obviously, on the uh, 
you know, preceding what we're going to be seeing from the book of Boba Fett series that's going to drop a month later in December. So very interesting. There's another special with uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe and what's coming in that future. Um, so that is Disney Plus Day. I think they're announced there's going to be more that they're going to talk about. Um, you know, it, 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 it's definitely uh, pretty cool that they're going to put that. I think we're going to get a lot more that day. Um, and what I mean by a lot more, maybe not on the sp- streaming service per se, but I do think there's going to be a lot of vi- content like trailers hitting that day. I think um, since we haven't gotten it yet and it's basically a month from now, um, we haven't gotten a book of Boba Fett trailer. So I do think that the, that's going to drop on November 12th. I think that uh, we may get some images or teasers from Obi-Wan or Andor. So, um, yeah, I think, I think there's going to be a lot going on that day. I think there's going to be a lot of people talking about all the stuff that's happening that day. So really look forward to that. Um, that's going to be something to look forward to and, and check out. So Disney plus day, November 12th. If you don't have Disney plus, you should probably get it. I guess if you want to, if you want to get into to stuff like that and see that stuff, um, there's another article I read in the gaming space about a new game coming from Quantic Dream. Um, this seems like a uh, a report that so Quantic Dream is um, a, a, a studio. Sounds like it's behind games called Heaven Rain, Beyond, and Detroit. Uh, become human. I am not familiar with those games whatsoever. Um, so I don't know what type of games they are. They look like adventure kind of RPG games. I don't know, but it seems like they have been working on a star Wars game for at least 18 months now. And it's very promising that we will get an announcement here soon about what they're doing. But um According to uh, a source that says Quantic Dream has indeed been working on a Star Wars game for approximately a year and a half, but it won't be the conventional type of quick time event driven game we've come to expect from the French studio. Instead, they said the game will have more traditional action gameplay and possibly even open world and multiplayer elements. So, uh, so interesting. Yeah always up for good games. I mean, we've been talking about those in the show forever. We want more Star Wars games. We need more Star Wars games. So I think there's, I think like next year with the Disney plus streaming service, there's going to be so much Star Wars content that's coming out. I think at some point here, either in 2022 or 2023, 2023, I think all of a sudden there's going to be just a slew of games coming out. We're gonna have we're gonna be hit by several of them in a row, and it's gonna be overwhelming to just get and play and uh, and 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 most of them I hope are more you know long play campaigns because that's what I'm into. But of course, if there's multiplayer elements, I think they'll keep the game more relevant. Um, and speaking of games, um, last time I talked about Tales from the Galaxy's Edge, which is their new the new VR game that had an update called last call. And uh, I played a few of the missions on there. Really, really enjoy doing that. I think, um, I think just a place for that in, in this, especially in star Wars, because you do get immersed in the world of Batu with this game and you get, uh, you just get lost in it. I mean, it's it's pretty amazing how you follow through the storyline. You have all these missions to do. You know, you're you're uh, sh- you know shooting stormtroopers or whatever, and uh, it's really immersive and it's really cool. So I I think I I know that it's hard to think about buying another gaming console sometimes, but uh, the Quest is a pretty unique. A unique thing and i think it's only going to get better and better so um highly recommend it I highly recommend the vader immortal games i hope they keep throwing and making content like that on there i think that that's going to be really cool um 
going down the road as, as, as games get better and VR gets better and whatnot. So, so I see, I highly recommend that. That's uh, go check that out. Um, another article I came across, uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi apparently has wrapped. Um, there's pictures out there floating around of, of cast and, and crews getting, you know, wrap day memorabilia. So, um, so that's good news. Um, can't wait for that. I think uh, again, on top of everything that's coming out, that is number one on my list. I cannot wait for the Obi One series. That's going to be incredible. There are rumors that you know, because I think right now a lot of people are thinking that uh, with Book of Boba Fett coming out in December, uh, that possibly since Andor started shooting before Obi One, that that would come out next, and then. Obi Wan, and then you know season two of the Bad Batch. Then of course we get Mandalorian at the end of next year, season three. Um, you know, there's there's thoughts and rumors out there and speculation that we actually could get could get Obi Wan after Book of Boba Fett and before Andor. I feel like Andor has a lot more episodes, so there might be editing that for a longer period of time. Obi Wan, you know, is a very short, limited run. I think it's six episodes, but maybe less. Um, so that could make sense. And, and it could be a lot less, you know, visual effects and whatnot, because Andor seems like it's a lot more people involved and a lot more uh, bigger sets and storylines. Obi-Wan could be a little more isolated. So you never know. That could be, that definitely could come out first. And remind me that first after the book of Boba Fett. So um, I think that's something that could get announced maybe a Disney plus day. Um, maybe the schedule, the release schedule. But we'll have to see uh, if it's not that day. I think it's coming. It's coming. It's coming quickly. So book of Boba Fett, uh, then Obi-Wan is a possibility. Uh, I don't know if you guys, I haven't actually heard much about this, but I wanted to mention it because I noticed that, on my on Disney Plus was um, the new series that came out called Star Wars Galaxy of Sounds. I thought that was really interesting. Um, you know, there's uh, right now there's seven episodes on there. I call it episodes, but it's basically just unique Star Wars sounds um, centered around what the episode title is. Like episode one is wonder, episode two is excitement, three is dark side, four is light side, five is beeps, six is connections seven is oddities you know so um i've only played a few of these and i've played them kind of in the background while i was working uh and that's exactly what i think it's good it's a star wars sounds and i thought it was a great concept um to do and just remind you how vast and unique some of these sounds are for for these movies and tv shows and whatnot so uh, I thought that was really cool. I thought it was really neat. And you can watch that on Disney plus they're all about seven, eight minutes long. So, you know, something good to have just playing in the background while you're, while you're working on stuff and doing stuff. So that's on Disney plus. If you haven't seen that yet, uh, speaking of book of Boba Fett, that, uh, finally got a release date and a poster. The poster doesn't really give us much because it's the same shot we shot. We saw at the very end of the Mandalorian season two, where Boba Fett gets uh, kills Bib Fortuna and sits on the throne there at Jabba's palace. Um, so nothing too special there, but the series is dropping December 29th. We got you know Christmas earlier, so now we know the date, which is um, which is Wednesday, December 29th. So these series. Disney Plus series are coming out on Wednesdays now. So expect Book of Boba Fett to be out every Wednesday starting December 29th. Lots to talk about as we lead up to that, obviously, especially when a trailer comes out. So we will we will check that out and talk about that. Uh, Lego Star Wars Terrifying Tales. Um, that dropped October 1st. Uh, gotta say I wasn't that big of a fan of it. 
um, wasn't, I wasn't drawn into it as much as I was with the holiday special. Um, the holiday special, meaning the Lego holiday special, not the 79, um, <laughs> holiday special. Um, so that's all I'll really say about it. I mean, if you, if you enjoyed it, great. If you want, if you haven't watched it, I think you should at least check it out. Um, but it was, uh, yeah, it was just a little different for me and didn't go with what I expected. And, you know, it was, it was okay. Even my daughter who really loves those Lego star Wars episodes didn't find this one that interesting either, you know, but Hey, I think, uh, I think a lot of people will find some good things about it. Um, not sure. I'll probably see it again, but you know, it's out there. It's good. At least go check it out and, uh, and, and draw your own conclusions. Um, now, uh, let's see. I'll, I'll get to that next here in a little bit. Uh, bring home the bounty. I went to starwars.com uh, yesterday and, um, or maybe it was even today. Um, there is a thing now called bring home the bounty, which is basically uh, Star Wars rolling out new merchandise. So this is week one of a 12 week. I guess, you know, 12 weeks of Christmas kind of thing. So it's the holiday season. New products are spanning Star Wars Galaxy. So, you know, you can go there to week one right now on StarWars.com. Click on that. You can see a bunch of new merchandise that they got from figures to um, to apparel, to home stuff, to books and comics, um, sunglasses and stuff like that. So uh, go to there. You can pre-order a lot of the figures so yeah, so each week looks like they're putting out some new merch that you can get your hands on and enjoy. So that is pretty neat. I didn't know that was happening. So pretty cool to go to starwars.com and check that out. Uh, Carl Weathers apparently has talked about uh, filming his parts of season three starting tomorrow. So, uh, or today if you're watching this on october uh 13th um yeah carl weathers will be back it seems like in season three we kind of all suspected that so not a surprise but he will be there and he is doing his scenes here this week um comics um we talked about War of the Bounty Hunters, you know, the comic series. Um, we haven't really fully we haven't fully do- dove into that yet, dived into that yet. We will on Beyond the Saga. Me and Hannah will be talking about War of the Bounty Hunters once it wraps. It will be wrapping this month. Uh, the second series that uh, Charles Soule is doing, comic, you know, short, limited series comic run, uh, it's called Crimson Rain which will deep dive deeper into the return of Crimson Dawn and Kira. But there's all, there was all these rumors and articles that there's going to be a third, a trilogy, right? A trilogy, a comic series. And apparently the, the third series, which is coming sometime middle of next year is called the hidden empire. And it takes place right before return of the Jedi. So that is, sounds like that's going to be Charles Soule's third, comic series that he's uh putting out there the hidden empire not more details beyond that but that looks like what's uh, what it's going to be now as far as the publication goes this, i wanted to save this kind of last but um the new novels that are coming out there was an article the other day that uh previewed novels coming out in 2022 this is crazy um some fantastic stories. So let me, let's dive into those, each one of those right now. One, the first one is called Star Wars Shadow of the Sith. Now, this, I think, is going to be the book. I, I got to think that this is one of the most anticipated books coming out. This takes place after Return of the Jedi, basically two decades after Return of the Jedi. So, you know, roughly 10 years before The Force Awakens. 
And this story is about Luke and Lando. And uh, I mean, this book is the one that is described as this. Uh, the Empire is dead. Nearly two decades from the Battle of Endor, the tattered remnants of Palpatine's forces have fled to the farthest reaches of the galaxy. But for the heroes of the New Republic, danger and loss are ever-present companions, even in the newly forged era of peace. Jedi Master Luke Skywalker is haunted by visions of the dark side, foretelling an ominous secret growing somewhere in the depths, depths of space on a dead world called Exegol. The disturbance of the force is undeniable, and Luke's worst fears are confirmed when his old friend Lando comes to him with reports of a new Sith menace. I mean, it, and then it goes into, you know, after, after his daughter was stolen from his arms, Lando searched the stars for any trace of his lost child, but every new rumor only led to dead ends and fading hopes until he crosses paths with Ochi of Bastoon, a Sith assassin tasked with kidnapping a young girl. Ochi's true motives remain shrouded to Luke and Lando, but on a junkyard moon, a mysterious envoy of, uh, of the Sith Eternal has bequested a sacred blade to the assassin, promising that it will give him answers to the questions that have haunted him since the Empire fell. In exchange, he must complete a final mission, return to Exegol with the key to the Sith's glorious rebirth, the granddaughter of Darth Sidious himself, Rey. As OG hunts, hunts Rey and her parents to the edge of the galaxy, Luke and Lando race into the mystery of the Sith's lingering shadow and aid a young family running for their lives. This is the story that people... I think especially Star Wars fans, not, I mean, definitely Star Wars fans. I think anybody that has seen the sequel trilogy, this is the story that it will, seems like it will explain so much. Um, I, I'm really I'm somewhat surprised that they're doing this, but then part of me is not because I think it's so needed to fully understand you know, Ray and how Palpatine survived and how this first order grew and what Luke's been doing and what he, what, what he's been going through this whole time. So um, this is amazing. I can't, I, I, and it's written by Adam Christopher. I am so, this is by far moved up to the top of my list of books that I need to get into when it comes out. Um, gosh, I cannot wait for that. I cannot wait to deep dive into this with Hannah, uh, on beyond the saga. And of course we'll talk about it inside the force, but, um, it's just an amazing story that again is, is so needed and, uh, you know, will this kind of hint also that it's possible that Jaina, you know, from, from, the rise of Skywalker is that Luke's or not Luke's is that Lando's daughter. I mean, will that hint at this a little bit, you know, cause there's always been rumors that there was be a story be, to kind of explain that maybe that that's this. Um, and then, yeah, Luke, you know, searching for, for this Sith wayfinder and a way to get to Exegol. I mean, this is, I mean, we, okay, of course we heard about it a little bit in rise of Skywalker from, you know, from Ray picking up the trail, but to see this and understand what's going on, I'm telling you, it's books like this, I think, that change the perception of the films, right? Just like some of these books now are doing now, changing perceptions of the original trilogy, the prequel trilogy. I mean, I got a whole new outlook, even though I was a big fan of Padme, I've got a whole new outlook on her just because of E.K. Johnson's books, right? And then, of course, the new one, Queen's Hope, will, will you know, it got delayed. We'll talk about that in a second. But, um, but it just changes. It just adds more depth to these characters and changes your perception of these movies. Um, so that one is, is massive to me. Um, cannot wait for that. Another book, Brotherhood looking forward to called uh, from Mike Chen 
um, coming out next year. This is Obi-Wan and Anakin. And it sounds like it's going to be this possibly. So here's, here's the description of this book. Um, the Clone Wars have begun. Battle lines are being drawn throughout the galaxy. With every world that joins the Separatist, the peace guarded by the Jedi Order is slipping through their fingers. After an explosion devastates Cato Nemodia, the jewel of the Trade Federation, the Republic is blamed and the fragile neutrality of the planet is threatened. The Jedi dispatch Obi-Wan Kenobi, one of the Order's most gifted diplomatic minds, to investigate the crime and maintain the balance that has begun to dangerously shift. As Obi-Wan investigates with the help of a heroic Neimodian guard, he finds himself working against the Separatists who hope to draw the planet into their conspiracy and senses the sinister hand of Asaz Ventress in the mists that cloak the planet. Amid the brewing chaos, Anakin Skywalker rises to the rank of Jedi Knight, despite the mandate that Obi-Wan travel alone and his former master's insistence that he listened this time. Anakin's headstrong determination means nothing can stop him from crashing the party and bringing along a promising but conflicting youngling. Once a Padawan to Obi-Wan, Anakin now finds himself an equal but uncertain footing with the man who raised him. The lingering friction between them increases the danger for everyone around them. The two knights must learn a new way to work together, and they must learn quickly to save Cato and Modia and its people from the fires of war. To overcome the threat they face, they must grow beyond master and apprentice. They must stand together as brothers. Again, looking forward to this and how much does this you know, add to their relationship, change anything about the relationship that, that we see. In the, I mean, this is, it seems like it's very early in the Clone Wars. So, uh, you know, that line that says nothing can stop him from crashing the party and bringing along a promising but conflicted youngling. So um, that's interesting because I don't think that means it's not Ahsoka because he hasn't met Ahsoka yet. And Ahsoka, by the time he meets, um, and she meets Anakin and they meet, which is in the Clone Wars movie, I think she's a Padawan, considered a Padawan at that point, or she becomes a Padawan. But it's no way that it's obviously it's not it's not it can't be her because they haven't met yet. Um, and when they meet, she basically becomes his Padawan. So interesting to figure out who that is. But anything with Asajj also is 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 fantastic, and um. You know, anything with these guys is going to be fun too. Anakin and Obi Wan, great, great, uh, great to see them together in the novel again. And looking forward to that. That'll be out next year as well. You got another, um, another book called Stories of Jedi and Sith. This is a kind of middle grade book about some stories uh, in between there from several writers. You've got a book called Padawan, uh, which talks about, uh, which is about Obi Wan Kenobi as he when he's a Padawan, and apparently this takes place prior to Master and Apprentice, which was done by Claudia Gray. Uh, this book's written by Kirsten White. Um, yeah, looks I look forward to that too. That that looks pretty good too, but. You know, Brotherhood, definitely. And then, man, Shadow of the Sith. I cannot wait for those two books. Those are going to be incredible um, to dive into. And hopefully they're as enjoyable as they seem like they're going to be. But um, definitely wanted to talk a little bit about those and look forward to di- deep diving into those and giving you full reports on those and thoughts on those because those are that's going to change a lot. I feel like for me and the uh, sequel trilogy. Okay. So on top of that, um, just some quick release dates you should be aware of um, with star Wars visions out there. Now um, a lot of people are talking about the first episode called the duel, um, which involves a character called Ronan, that novel Ronan, um, which is a Delray novel that's coming out October 12th. Actually, it's just came out, came out today. Um, 
or yesterday. I was, you know, when I recorded this on the 12th, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, that book is out there. You can go grab that right now. Uh, Thrawn Ascendancy is the next book, which comes out uh, November, excuse me, November 16th. That's the third book in the Thrawn Ascendancy tr- trilogy. And then, like I said, with the books um, that we talked about just now, um, The High Republic Falling Star, which kicks off wave three, comes January 4th. Uh, Midnight Horizon comes February 1st. Queen's Hope, which was supposed to come out in November, actually got postponed, it looks like, and is now coming out April 5th, unfortunately, because I was really looking forward to that. Brotherhood, which we just talked about, is May 10th. Shadow of the Sith, June 28th, and then Padawan, July 26th. So uh, lots of great books coming out the first half of next year. Uh, Really can't wait to really deep dive into a lot of those. Gosh, I'm so far behind on books. I need to to really start listening to these things and and get caught up. Comics-wise, you got War of the Bounty Hunters, number five, wrapping up today. Number five is out today, along with uh, Ghost of Vader's Castle, number four, uh, the High Republic Trial of Shadows, number one. Dr. Afford, number 15. All those books are out today, October 13th. Next week, you got High Republic, number 10. Uh, the IG-88 uh, special from War of the Bounty Hunters, number one. Octo- that's next week. Darth Vader, number 17th, is next week. Ghost of Vader's Castle, number five, is next week. Star Wars Adventures, number 11, is next week. And then wrapping up on October 27th, you got Bounty Hunters 17, Star Wars 18, and The High Republic, The Monster of Temple Peak number three. So lots of comics coming out, lots of content coming out. And then, like I said earlier, the Book of Boba Fett hit in December 29th. So before we know it, it is going to be the end of the year, which is crazy. And um, yeah, that is the full list of things that I wanted to mention on this. I still am surprised we haven't heard anything about what's happening with Star Wars Celebration because I'm actually thinking about plans around that time. You know, it's happening in the last weekend of May, but they haven't released whether or not, you know, new tickets are going to be available. If you've got tickets from last time you purchased them, those still work. But, um, you know, California's little on, you know, I guess uh, still figuring out mandates and mask mandates and how they're going to have crowds and stuff like that. So um, I guess they're waiting to see, but um, I want to go, but I want to, I got to figure out if uh, how I can get tickets and if they're going to be tickets and how travel is going to work. I don't know, but I'm kind of just surprised they haven't um, released anything out for that yet. Um. Yeah, I don't have really a main topic for that, so I just wanted to kind of bust through a bunch of the news from the past week, and you know, I haven't stopped talking. Usually in these episodes, <laughs> the other person is talking with me, so I haven't stopped talking, and I don't even know how long I've been going. Um, but I did want to mention some comments from from you guys out there, um, especially on YouTube. You know, uh, just looking back like at the last since the last episode, um, you know, uh, let me see a couple of these, um, you know, Thrawn Attic mentioned, uh, we talked about, uh, Luke in episode three, three, eight. They mentioned, I agree. Always need more Luke and would love to fill in some gaps between 30 years. because 30 years is a long time, whether it's seeing him hunting artifacts or starting Jedi temple, I'm up for it. Live action or animation. Yeah, we talked about that. Well, there you go. So Shadow of the Sith is the book. It's going to take place about 10 years before episode seven. I think that's going to just fill in a ton of of uh, answers to questions that we've had about Luke in that time. And it's going to deep dive into um into searching for the Sith and everything there. And that's a goal right there. So I think that is going to be pretty cool for you Thrawn Attic to uh, deep dive into. Um, let's see. 
Yeah, Jojo Jar Jar says, I'm so excited. Hopefully it will be canon, referring to the remake of the, uh, the Old Republic, Knights of the Old Republic. So I'm with you. I hope that is canon as well. Um, and Thrawn Attic again says, want to go on this so badly, which is the Millennium Falcon when we talked about that episode. Yeah, Millennium Falcon was a, is an incredible, incredible experience. Um, I'll be going back to Disney at the end of the year and uh, can't wait to ride that again. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, so that would continue, you know, everybody, hopefully I, I, I'm just grabbing some of them up, but thanks again for all the comments and stuff like that. I do have one tweet also um the questions that came through there i want to make sure i get to those i think it actually came through on my twitter account yeah from uh just want to address these because i because I, I know i answered them in twitter but anyway so yeah yeah reality check um 76 on here said um so many questions. So one was Barris Afi was force sensitive, but betrayed the Republic and the Jedi Order. For that, she was imprisoned. What became of her after Order 66 was imp- implemented? Very good question. Um, so Barris Afi, yes, apparently survived Order 66. And, um, and I think... I want to say that there is rumors. There's definitely a lot of rumors of when Barisafi could um, show up again, but apparently there is rumors that she could possibly show up on the Obi Wan live action series. It's the, one of the things that I've read and heard. Um, I don't know if that's going to be true or not, but you know. Um, you know, she unfortunately had a good relationship for a while there with with Ahsoka, um, and and I think she became a very she became a very likable character in the Clone Wars. Of course, that was stunning what we saw at the end of season five. You know, of course, with um, with Ahsoka and in framing her and and all that. So. Um, there again, there is rumors that that she could show up in um, in a live action setting, or or be le- or, or we learn that she survives and and comes up in another uh, another story or something like that. So uh, we don't fully know exactly what happened to her. Um, you know, yeah, I'm just kind of quickly. Re- trying to find an article where I read where she could show up, but, um, but um, anyway, uh, she definitely survived. I I believe she, she survived and I believe she will be showing up some way or other. Maybe it's even in the bad batch could be that. Um, I think Filoni will find a way to kind of get her either in a live action setting or, um, or back in animated form. So that is that. Um, number two from Reality Check was prior to the destruction of Camino, what did the Empire do with the thousands of clones still in existence? A friend suggests that the Empire forced them into labor building the Death Star. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't think that they were just put to labor building stuff. I think they still utilized the clones, as we saw in the Bad Batch, they were still using them to train, you know, the next elite stormtrooper corps and the stormtrooper corps and all these citizens that were coming in and joining the Empire. They were set to train them. I think they, I think they're, the Empire knew that their, their number was running out because they were, you know, they had accelerated aging. So they weren't sustainable to keep around all that long. 
but but also the umpire didn't i don't think they ever thought obviously that they would have to fight anything right i mean no with with the support of all of the galaxy and even the senate the empire really didn't have any enemies i mean the rebellion in a sense didn't really start to years later so all they had were these pockets of rebels and for the most part they were they were maintaining and sustaining them and um you know it was really wasn't until obviously luke and leg got involved that the the rebellion really took shape and 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 became a threat so i don't think uh I don't think the troopers were ever meant to stay in the empire. I think it, they were all eventually going to be phased out. I think we'll, I think we're going to learn more of that in the bad batch, exactly what happens to them and the whole process of cloning and stuff like that. So I think that's, I think that's, that's what we'll see um, going into that. I think, I think we'll be revisiting that question for sure in the next, within the next few months about what's, what's going to happen with the, the clones and, and whatnot. Um, but that's, I think they're just waiting to phase them out as, as the stormtrooper core basically gets trained up and, and whatnot. So that's kind of where I'm at of that. And then reality says, lastly, in the Mando episode, the tragedy didn't seem that Boba Fett was especially brutal and vicious towards the stormtroopers. I wonder if he has some sort of pent up anger and hate that is, that he is releasing Perhaps he blames them for harming his sister, Omega. Interesting. Very interesting. Um, yes, that was very brutal. I think, you know, I, I do think that it, it, it was part of the character. I think there is some pent up rage in Boba Fett at that point, you know, from, I mean, it's been five years, right? So he's been, we think he's been looking for his armor. We think he's been, you know, trapped on Tatooine in a sense and not being able to, uh, to get his armor and inflict the revenge that he wants to, which I think is what this next show is going to be about more only, right? His revenge on and his, uh, from, from some people and, and then his um, attempt to you know, take over that part of the galaxy. Um, did they harm Omega that he, he know we know about it? That's a great question. I think this is so far into the future from the Bad Batch. We, we still don't know Omega's fate. So that's the only issue I have is how long, if he does meet Omega, how long are they together? How long does he form a relationship with her? Um, Cause you got to remember this. Yeah. This is close to 30 years or, or it's about 20. Yeah. 27, 28 years later than bad batch. Yeah. Does, does he have that relationship with Omega and does he know enough to know that, they were harmed by, she was harmed by stormtroopers. I don't know. That'd be interesting to see and hear, but I think he just was so enraged over the last five years from what happened to him, you know, at the Sarlacc and then not being able to get his armor back. And I just think that, uh, but I also think half of it also is, <laughs> is the way that Robert Rodriguez likes to shoot action sequences. I think I think that was part of the, the, the directing. So, but maybe they're, you know, maybe it's definitely connected to his character. I think that there's probably some truth to that. So um, anyway, I think, I think we'll, time will tell when we get into the book of Boba Fett, you know, what, uh, what the meaning was that, uh, that scene to the, to, to Boba Fett. So great questions. Thanks for that. Um, and thanks for the comments again on YouTube. Um, that will do it for this episode. I'm going to end this episode because my throat is starting to hurt doing this all by myself. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed me doing this. You know, and honestly, you could be brutally honest if you feel like, you know, hey, Dave, don't do this anymore. Wait till you get a guest or a, ho- a co-host because 
uh, we don't want to hear you talk for however long it was. I, I, I can take it. I'd love to hear um, whether or not you like this or not. Cause I may, maybe I'll do more of these by myself if I have to. Um, but uh, it was fun. I'll just have an, oh, I'll have a bottle of water next time so I can clear my throat. <laughs> so um, thanks everybody really for listening and subscribing and, and commenting and tweeting and all that stuff. Uh, I'm doing my best to get some more content out there. Hopefully more, uh, more opportunities will come to be able to interact with you guys a little bit more, but in the meantime, go to inside the force.com and subscribe anywhere on the podcast feeds. We're on all of them and we're at youtube.com uh, slash inside the force. Hit that subscribe on there to watch the podcast as well as our other shows like beyond the saga council sessions, master of the order. And then I've got a couple other things brewing on there that hopefully you guys will enjoy. So yeah. Um, see you guys next week, either by myself or with somebody else, hopefully with somebody else, but uh, yeah, take care, have a great week. And again, a much appreciated and for all that you guys do for supporting inside the force. Take care. See you next week. May the force be with you.